And good morning, 21 minutes after 7 o'clock. Sean Smalls filling in for Mixmaster Mike Winters. And joining us in studio this morning is Christina Arnold, uh, council, City Council Ward 1 candidate. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. It's been uh, it's been a crazy morning, crazy couple of days, but uh, we are making it work. It's a crazy time to be here in southeastern New Mexico. Election season, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of... Uh, you know, opinions left, right, and center. Everybody's got something to say on social media. It's it's definitely an interesting time to be a part of the discourse. And, uh, and of course, we're doing an election amidst all of it. So uh, City Council Ward 1 is the uh, is the area you're running for, correct? Correct. So let's let's talk about uh, how you feel about, about the city of Roswell. Obviously, there's there's some huge places that we need to improve. There's, you know, places, things that we're doing great, things that we need to improve. Where do you stand as far as, like, the city of Roswell goes and, and what we can do to improve? Okay, so well, that's a really broad question because you're talking. Start broad, we'll, we'll, narrow, we'll laser focus in. <laughs> it is a city government, so um, you know, government in itself is never perfect, mm -hmm. and it, it takes a nice mesh of the right people to make it perfect. And so that's something I think that is uh, some a goal that people should reach for. Sure. Uh, as far as Ward One. I think the thing that I would like to really focus on, if elected, is um, crime mm -hmm. and infrastructure. When I say infrastructure, I mean streets, because right. in Ward One, these streets are a serious issue. You know, we have some, we have some streets, and they're not main fair. You know, main uh, what's the word? Thoroughfares. There, I sure. wanted to say thoroughfares, <laughs> <laughs> but they. Um, they still need some attention. Oh, they absolutely the, the do. The curbs are dilapidated. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's pretty serious. So uh, most of the people that I have talked to in the ward going door to door, mm -hmm. when I ask them what is an issue that you really want me to focus on, it is repairing their streets. Absolutely. The historic district has, you know, is a fundamental part of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's been a lot of my history growing up. Uh, and so to me, Good infrastructure, good solid streets, nice sidewalks, sure. curbs, that uh, type of stuff. It's not really exciting, but <laughs> it's but it's necessary. Oh, See, it is. I, I'm a guy who, and this is going to sound silly, but I I like to stay off the main streets. I don't like yeah. to drive Second Main, whatever. Right. I love the back roads. Exactly. So I'm driving down Third Street. It's great until you get to any intersection. You have to drive over a giant speed hump of a road into a ditch, like on the other side of either either side of the road. There's, I mean, there's there's potholes. Yep. There's bad, you know, chip ceiling that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Obviously, these are all uh, concerns, and there's lots of, of streets and roads in, in Roswell. But one of the things that, I mean, I'm sure anybody who's lived in Roswell has noticed is anytime any construction project is undertaken, it's a year, two years, a couple and a half years before anything, any progress is made. I mean, just... You look at, you Are know, you talking like from when they start the project I'm talking or about like you funding and all that? Funding, yeah. the, the, the going through the, the whole process mechanism. Of, of getting it approved, uh, then the construction process. I mean, then the then the you know finding the the right. It's it's such an arduous task. It's such a long process. So you know, when I first started getting interested in public policy, um, I of course all you know thought, well, why aren't the roads fixed? Well, to me, the biggest thing that you can do to benefit yourself is ask why. And you ask the right people why, and then you kind of learn. Um, I, I, as I've said, I've spoken with Mr. Nahar, uh, the city engineer, and, and kind of comprehend where the issues lie. And I do see that he focuses on trying to get our roads repaired. There are just certain speed bumps, should I say, mm -hmm. that get in the way. Sure. Funding is a big one. Yeah. You know, a lot of these back streets that you're talking about, third and, and, and the ones that aren't the... Um, What's the word? Thoroughfares? Thoroughfares. <laughs> I almost have that backwards. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, those streets that are main thoroughfares, actually, you can get state funding. Okay. And so for the the little ones. For the, the side roads. The side roads, the city has to come up with that funding. Gotcha. And so it, you know, it creates a dilemma and it, it's a matter of um, what we can fund and what we can't and sure. when we can fund it and all, you know, different. There's always different reasons why things aren't happening. You know, I I know it's it's nice to think that it's someone is inept or you know something's wrong, but it's not. It's a system that probably needs to be looked at, but it's also a system that comes from the state down too. So, right. <laughs> and it's it's something that it's you know you don't really think about it on the in the everyday you know goings on until you're 
out there riding the roads, until you're out there you know, yeah. getting stuck in a pothole, until you're yeah. you know, just seeing some of the some of the issues that you know that that Roswell is facing, and and just wanting something to be done about it. But as you said, there's like 16 hurdles you have to jump, a lot of red tape that you have to you know cut through, and there's a limited amount of funds. Mm-hmm. I mean, just admittedly, there's only so much money that can go around, and and it's all about allocation and, and figuring out the right way to, to spend it. But I, I will be honest. Yeah, there is limited funds, but you also, the city council is the one that funds Mr. Nahar. And to me, um, the, the infrastructure is one of the main roles of the government. And so to me, that's where, you know, funding needs to be focused. Now, I understand there's several different funds. There's a ton to fund. But uh, I think that if the people are asking for better roads, that should be a priority. Absolutely, it should. Now, unfortunately, uh, I have to get in there, figure out, you know, what other priorities are there. And, 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 but to me, and roads are one of my priorities. Mm-hmm. And one of the other things you touched on back there too, and and this is a this is a big one, is is crime, is you know and I've seen this statistic tossed around on on you know social media. There's no idea how much truth there is to it, but a lot of people saying that per capita we're you know similar to Chicago as far as right. like you know violent crime uh, mm-hmm. goes uh, mm-hmm. here in Roswell. I mean, there's and it's it's sad. It's because I've I've spent most of my you know teen and then adult life in Roswell, and so I've seen it really go from this this place where I wanted to raise my kids and start a family to, to to where it is now. I mean, what what can be done? So the this is what I found because I did talk to quite a few people on this one that were in the criminal justice field. Just because, you know, to me, I can talk to one person, but I need perspective of about six to really get, formulate an opinion. Sure. And crime is not just more police. Crime... In order to fight it, it has so many different aspects that have to be hit simultaneously for there uh, to be an effective. I agree. So I look at a connection between your courts, your policing agencies, your government agencies, mm-hmm. and your people. And so that those have to flow real beautifully right. in order to, to uh, limit crime. Here in uh, Roswell... What I have ascertained from the people I've talked to is that we have kind of the same people committing crimes, but the, there lies the problem of a revolving door. Recidivism, right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so those things are kind of put in place by Santa Fe because it's the judge, you know, the cops catch them, the judge mm-hmm. takes them, and um, and then they, they have to follow sentencing rules, guidelines from the state, right. which puts them back out. So, you know, uh, also you have new criminal justice reforms that are coming out. And and I understand the purpose for some criminal justice reform. But at the same time, we have to really make sure that it's an effective method. Because when you do alternative sentencing, if you're not treating the root problem, which I believe is mental health and drugs, then we're just going to be going in a circle. It's just like the definition of insanity. Exactly. And so I know that a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about pulling funding from prisons and shutting, that funding needs to go towards mental health facilities and drug treatment. I 100% agree. It's, it, it, it lies mostly in mental health. Right. And, and, and drug use is absolutely a, a huge and prevalent problem, but a lot of, you know, drug use starts and stems from, you know, mental issues health. with mental health. Yeah, exactly. It, you, you have to tackle the root. You have yeah. to hit it where, you know, hit it where it starts. And and it really is. It starts at, at education and intervention from a young age. Yes. You know, and, and, and finding that, seeing that that issue and, and nipping it in the bud, so to speak. Yeah, and our police for our policing forces here in Roswell actually do a really good job they at do. trying to make sure that they are prepared. But uh, there again, like I said, they are they're just part of the definition of insanity because all they do is catch and, you know, they have to it has to have a little assistance from the community, the court system and the state. So um, it's a big issue. But also when I say the community, we I think it was um, I hope I'm saying her rank right. Sergeant Gracie um, Fresquez done a great job with the neighborhood watch. She has increased, um, I think, that from four to, I think she has 13 or 14 now, different neighborhood watches in our community, really? in our, yeah, in our that's... city. She's done a stellar job. But that's, a, you know, that's another thing that's very effective. 
people if people know that these neighborhoods are being watched they're less likely to be active in them right. and so it, it that's a good program it's deterring it um there's many methods you can deter crime from your neighborhoods and so to me just making sure that my neighbors are aware of what's out there uh is kind of where i i talk i'm talking about okay uh, ward one is going to approach fighting crime like this right and and you you tapped on something right there is there's not just one simple solution to get there. We have to no. put the dominoes in place in order to knock them all down to, right. get, to get to that solution. And it's not going to be an easy fix or quick fix. Mm-mm. We can get Roswell back to where you know we used to be. You can make Roswell great again, so to speak. It just it just takes a lot of uh, you know a lot of steps in the process and a, a lot of uh, meeting of the minds. We have to kind of agree on on some things. I think that's where a lot of our problem lies. Is we've just we've been butting heads nonstop for the last half decade. Yes. Well, I, I see a public that has emotions. Um, and, you know, one of the ways to really fix that is you can depend on your leaders to do certain things, but you have to engage as a public as well. You have to be in the room telling them what you want. Right. And um, after the fact is ineffective, <laughs> it has to be while it's occurring. So if, you know, if you want a strong community, the community itself has to engage. That community itself has to be involved. Absolutely. And we have a good group of people that are involved. But it, again, it seems like it's that, that same definition of insanity. It seems like it's that same group of people trying to make, trying to move mountains, essentially, right. while the rest of the community just sort of like sits around and complains about it. Right. Instead, I think more of us need to actually get out and be a part of, of you know, the process. I think it's an eight, called an 80-20 rule. Where twenty percent of the people do eighty percent of the work. Yes, yeah. that mm-hmm. sounds about right. Mm-hmm. But, we're, but but while the while the twenty are carrying the eighty, it's fine. Nobody's looking. Right. Just don't drop the ball, and we'll be like, we'll all be fine. Yes. Well. Yes. That. But that twenty, if they drop the ball, then that eighty is coming after them. <laughs> Boy, how yeah, is yes. it ever? Yes. Uh, so uh, March first is uh, is the election. Uh, early is. voting is now open. Uh, you can vote at any of the uh, early convenient or early voting convenience centers uh, around town, including uh, the. Uh, main courthouse there at one St. Mary's place. I believe they're also uh, at the Chavez County court or the, the, the main courthouse downtown. I'm not totally sure. I think there's one or two places here in, uh, in town uh, that you can uh, vote. I'll pull up the list of voting convenience centers here in just a moment so we can. Uh, I think it's definitely folks. at city hall. I can city hall. That's, that's I can definitely say yes on city hall. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, get your early votes in um, and get those, make that happen. But yeah, March 1st is the, uh, is the day to make your voice heard. Um, and uh, it's it's definitely an interesting race this year. It's it's been um, one of the more hotly contested in all the different categories that I remember that I remember being a part of. It's very fun to watch the discourse, watch you know, the arguments go back and forth. I like the whole thing that the whole thing's basically been boiled down to the length and length of a pool. Right. It's, well, it's amazing to me. There's a yeah. That's actually especially when we have some really serious issues and we're t- you know like I said a pool that was decided years ago and um you know people had the opportunity to communicate at over that poll and over <laughs> and over again yeah, about the poll you know it's really interesting because for people who know me I, i'm a person who doesn't concentrate on problems i concentrate on solutions and so i don't get emotional about a lot of division issues or anything i i'm seriously focused on what needs to be done or what could be done or finding out what could be done. I'm very driven. So I do see the division and I do see the discourse and the, um, but it hasn't really riled me because I'm, I'm really focused on war, ward one. I'm not focused on the mayor's race. That's not my, right. it's not my issue. Um, and so it's really interesting because I, I'm trying to think of what I, I just lost it. Just, well, <laughs> I the, think the it was focus, my the, echo. <laughs> the focus, it, it needs to be on specific, like you said, like on your area. You you can get that broad set right. mind of, of, oh, you know, I'm working, I'm working with the city. I'm working with, you know, with, with the county now, but, but your focus is on your ward. Yeah. Well, that's where it should be. And you make decisions that do affect the whole city as a whole. I do recognize that. So yes, I'm going to be very sure that uh, if elected, I recognize what i'm doing to the city as a whole sure about what my goal for the my neighbors in ward one is 
to really focus on those key issues that I pointed out, the third one was um, economic development, because I do believe economic development would bring in the funding to help us with crime and infrastructure. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, in, in economic development, infrastructure is also a part of that. So to me, that's why infrastructure and public safety are two main um, responsibilities of government. Absolutely. And uh, so... I, th- what I really believe that I can bring to the table forward one is working to keep a focus on those issues while serving on city council. I, I, I recognize that I'm just one of 10. And so, you know, what kind of power do you have? I, I can tell you I'm going to go in there and we're going to have unicorns and rainbows within a week. But right. that we all know that it, that's not the case. Right. But my goal is to keep the focus on Ward 1 on those three issues and that's what i can you know pledge to do is to continuously bring those topics up continuously point that out and work towards um better solutions for ward one it can't change things overnight but (laughs) being a voice in the room is what's is what's going to have an effect yeah and and one of the things about you know the campaign process about you know going around flyering handing out you know handing out uh, pamphlets knocking on doors you meet people, you hear stories. You're, I mean, you're, you're in the public. Yeah. You're, you're talking to people. You're hearing all these, these folks that they're giving you their stories and saying, you know, these last couple of years have been, have been rough because of this, because of that, because of the pandemic, because of, you know, job loss, furloughs. And, and it's, it's been hard all over, but you're, you're hearing these stories and, and they're basically kind of leaning on you to, to be somebody to do something about it. Well, and that's actually, thanks for segueing me, because you kind of segued me into the next area that I was going to point on. It, because I believe that the role of government should be limited, I believe where the government cannot, the people should. And so that, to me, connecting with my neighbors, getting out there, door knocking, sending letters to them, talking to them, making sure that they have one, uh, one consistent with me, and that's my phone number. Right. Because... If they will reach out to me with issues, I want to be able to connect them with community organizations that can fix the problem if the government cannot, because that has been a lot of my side work. And I I have a business that allows me to work in the community. So I work to build those relationships. I call it super connecting. And um, so if people have an issue that I may not be able to do anything about with the city, then I may be able to help them and connect them to the right organization where we can work together. And that's why I say it's the people coming up and resolving our issues where the government does not, Mm -hmm. because I really want to keep the government within its role. As we've seen within the last two years, you know, um, our local government has been really good regarding trying to stay out of our lives with COVID. We got state and federal encroachment. And uh, so to me, I think most of the people want to be left alone by the government. Right. And so that's kind of my goal is to keep the government in its role and, and work with community organizations. I think one of the things you tapped on there is is having the knowledge of the resources that are available. Exactly. Because, yeah, the government can only do so much. But if you have a list of, okay, well, let's let's look at this avenue. Mm-hmm. Let's look at that avenue. There's There's three or four different ways that we can go about solving any number of different problems. As long as you, like you said, super connect, make all those different connections and, and yep. resources. That's, it's about, that's yeah, key. that's well, the biggest thing is uh, I have once actually worked for uh, on a campaign for a gentleman named Bazell, and he actually has sold and he's built and sold two electric companies. Really? Yeah, he's an electrician. So um, it was he, he's out in Socorro, um, Berlin area, but he. He actually told me that it's not important about what I know. It's important about what the people I hire know. Like that. So that's why to me, I surround yourself with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So to me, I may not know much, but I do know who to call who does. (laughs) Not what you know, it's who you know. That's, that's, that's key. That's, that's key in a lot of different areas actually. Uh, So yeah, that's, I mean, that's absolutely. And it's, it's great to know that, that you're, of the people yes. you know, that you're not not you wanting to get into the office and, and just kind of lock yourself away and do you, you know, do your time and and you know make your voice heard no one else's you're 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 out there you're pounding the pavement yes absolutely yeah and i have a good super trooper my dad always drives me we spend time so that's how we spend our time he's <laughs> you know on saturdays we've been spending it just driving around door knocking and hang, hanging out so uh, if folks in ward one uh want to find out more about you uh where you stand uh how how do they find you 
Well, I'm on Facebook. Okay. It's Christina for Roswell City Council. Okay. And uh, you can always call me. I could give out my number, but everybody might be driving. I've right. tried to do that, and I try to memorize it. But my number is 505-353-6669. So I, I try to put that out there because I am definitely open to conversation. I'm open to, you know, solving issues. I've had several people call me off of some of my stuff, and I've had some really great conversations with the um, neighbors of Ward 1. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's actually been fantastic. I love en- <clears throat> engaging with the community. And that's a great way to, you know, to, to get specific, you know, areas of interest or specific to know where, where the concerns are. You know, if, if maybe somebody doesn't want to feel, doesn't feel comfortable talking to you in person about it, they can reach out to you on Facebook, mm-hmm. maybe a messenger, give you a call. There's, there's plenty of ways to, to reach out. Yeah, I, I had one lovely lady call me um, and she was actually, you know, has been part of the historic district since she was really young. And the historic district was a big part of my um, youth as well. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of people who are passionate about trying to really maintain that. My dad talked about it a lot when he, you know, was a child and he kind of tells me what he remembers. Um, and so, you know, even on the east side, there is there is some work that needs to be done. Absolutely. I, I do see some potential for improvement uh, on the east side as far as i understand they're putting like a tourist park over there yeah. i'm very excited to see that and a little bit of a gentrification kind of of the the third street area the, the that where the third street station used to be and all that yeah yeah well if you That's ever exciting. picked up patterns of zones of transition uh you'll see that I, everything reblossoms, and i think that that area is prime for some you know a lot of opportunity absolutely i i 100 agree and i think that it's We've gotten up to a point where there's room to improve now. We've kind of like you've mm-hmm. shaken it down to kind of the base, and now we can kind of build up on it, you know? Well, yeah, and one of the things I, I want to make sure that um, I, I stay on top of is, I, I you know, we have to keep Roswell growing because there, there's a lot of requests for growth. Uh, if you ask people, they want growth here too. Right, right. Um, but I want to make sure that we, in, in creating the funding for growth, we don't actually uh, neglect our areas that we already have right and so that's where i'm like i'm for growth but um it's kind of um it's pointless if we don't take care of what we already have exactly it's exciting to get a new place in town it's exciting to get a new thing a new new toy for a minute but let's not forget to play with the toys that we have yeah yeah because then it makes it worse and we have to spend more money to repair them (laughs) absolutely so it's 505-353-6669 if you want more information or christina for city council ward one uh-huh. On Facebook, correct? That, that's right. All right, go go look them up and uh, and again make your voice heard, folks. Vote. It is coming up March first. Early voting happening. City Council or City Hall, and uh, I believe the uh, Chavez County Courthouse as well. There's plenty of places to get your get your vote out there, but uh, make it happen by March the first. Miss Christina, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, thank you. Good morning, Roswell. Wake up. <laughs> get on.